social social butterfly was like one of our first presenters, and we always kind of wonder what happens to these guys after they present. What they think? Were they successful? And we follow a lot of them, and they have been successful, which says a lot about what we're doing here. But Brandon's coming back to give us an update, and so we are deeply grateful for that. Brandon, social butterfly, let her rip. Let her rip. I love it. Let me turn on this mic real quick. Good. Yes. All right. I talk pretty loud anyways. Good to go. All right. Um, well, thank you for being here and inviting me back. Um, I did do the very first One Million Cups, and I'm very, very thankful for that opportunity. Um, but I think I was a little early to the gun. I didn't have a clear focus, um, and that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today because I have a big need and I have a lot of traction right now. So. Backing up a little bit, Social Butterfly is a creative agency. We bridge the gap between finding business owners that want to tell everything to the world, but not realizing what consumers actually want to see and bridging that gap to give them the best of both worlds. And so we do a lot with uh, video production, photography, social media management, content creation, Facebook advertising. And the biggest piece is to simplify it is we create content, but we also distribute it because you have these pr video production companies, you have these marketing agencies, and they don't talk. We do both of those things and we distribute it, but the best part is with social media, we track all that data and optimize it. Um, so I wanted to show you guys something that's very relevant because um, the, the 150th anniversary per parade, this just kind of goes to show what our company can do. That's pretty cool, by the way. Thank you, thank you. Um, so we actually weren't even contracted by the university to do this. Long story short, if you want to talk to me about it, it's very interesting. I said, I want to make a statement to the university. I want to show people what I can do and what my team can produce. We went out and we were hopping in and out of floats. We were, we were filming stuff. And I said, if I didn't get that contract to film this, I'm going to show them the content that they didn't, didn't even know that they wanted. I put out this um, recap with extra footage, didn't set up anything. I threw this edit out in 18 hours after I left that parade when it ended. Here's the recap. <laughs> on that, but this is the cool stuff. No, it is a cool video. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, here's the data on it. We just looked up before this meeting, 40 to 45,000 active daily users on Facebook are in Mankato alone. We reached 20,000 in two days. 180 shares, 24 comments, and 317 likes. The funny part about it is the university main home Facebook page shared it and commented on it and used it for their content. The CSU shared it, and I got four calls from the department asking that they didn't even know about us. And so now my problem is I don't need help selling my product. I need help building my team. When I did this presentation last year, we had like $40,000 logged in revenue, and we ended the year at $63,000. This year, on a conservative side, we're going to hit just shy of under a quarter million dollars. We're going to be 200 to 220. I know what to do, guys. I just need to build a team. I'm going to marketing class. I'm talking to entrepreneurship class. I'm showing that this started from a class project, and I have some ideas that I want to talk about entrepreneurship and how to get students to you know, really start something, because this happened in their program. And right now, we're, we're, we're blowing up, and I don't want to turn down business, because I'm not a manufacturing business. I can't just buy a $15,000 piece of equipment and just pump in labor and punt it up. The biggest thing for me is my quality control. I care about my businesses, and that's why I have a strong team that I have, is that's my general foundation is I care about the content, I care about my clients, and I care about my team. But how do I build a talent-driven business? How do I scale that? Because I'm going to build the next biggest agency, 
but I don't, I've never met anyone that's skilled in talent-driven business, and that's my question for you guys today, is how do I get in front of that person? Because I think technology is changing a lot of things, and I don't think I'm anything, you know, per se special, but I think I'm very practical in using what's in front of me, and not, you know, not thinking the word traditional, I'm thinking very progressive, and I want to take what a talent-driven person who has built a talent-driven business and been successful with it, and I want to take what they did and apply it to here and show everyone what we can really do when I have more than just me. This is me and four other dudes. <laughs> and it was me and one other guy that filmed this and I edited this. So I can't just do everything. I mean, if I could, it's, you know, $100,000 retainer and we can make it work. <laughs> but that's not the goal. I want to make it affordable. I want to make it accessible. If you want a next day turnaround, you know, there's a higher retainer for that. But I can do that. And imagine if I would have gotten the contract to set up the shots and like really put something together. It would have blown it out of the water. Mm -hmm. My strategy behind this is I can help beat the competition because by the time the person who actually you know did this video, it's going to be old news because I just reached half of their talent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in two days. So I know I rant and I know it's kind of all over and I didn't really dive <laughs> deep in into you know selling what I do for my business. But my ask is how do I get in front of those people? How do I get in front of someone that can say, okay, kids, slow down, take a deep <laughs> breath, and here's what you need to do because. I'm talking to different people at, you know, at the different class level. I'm working higher up um, with some individuals at the university and how I can partner with them. But I want to hire their students. I, I don't know if you guys have looked at the Mogwai model downstairs in co-working. So we actually have two offices, per se. In Mankato here, working out of co-working space. And it's, it's so smart, the way that that model is built. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the WeWork business. They're one lease away in having the most private office space in the New York Financial District behind J.P. Morgan, I think they started five years ago because of this co-working model. And uh, there's one in Minneapolis, but it's the same model here in, in Mogwai. And you're able to you know, have free working spaces, you're able to network with work, and I'm from a perspective where I can find different designers, I can find different website use, or, um, developers and photographers and bring them onto my team or find different work. And so we work out of the one in Mankato, I work out of the one in Rochester too because we're doing some business development over there. Um, that's what I got. Oh, that is wonderful. Okay, thank you. Talk about huge success. Put on my